Okay, so for our gels, they can be classified based on the basis of colloidal phases, based on the nature of solvent used, the physical nature, and rheological properties. So we will start with the classification of gels based on colloidal system. So one here is the um, two-phase system and the, single, the other one is the single-phase system. So for the two-phase system, um, organic particles are not dissolved but merely dispersed throughout the continuous phase, randomly coiled in the flexible chains. If the gel contains small discrete particles, the gel is called a two-phase system. So for um, two-phase system, they are usually more of the um, called as magmas or milk. Okay? And, and again, they are the ones which possess mostly the one that we have mentioned earlier, um, thixotropy. Okay? So, thixotropy. For our two-phase systems, they are thixotropic. They are semi-solid on standing, but they liquefy when they are shaken. If the particle size in a two-phase system is large, the gel is referred to as, again, what we call as magma. If it's not too large, we refer to it as milk. Then we also have here our single phase system. For our single phase system, they consist um, of large organic molecule existing on the twisted strands or stands dissolved in continuous phase. And the gels in which the macromolecules are distributed so that no apparent boundaries exist between them and the liquid. So for our single phase gels, they are usually made from um, synthetic or natural macromolecules. Synthetic or natural macromolecules. For our synthetic and ma natural macromolecules, usually um, our natural sourced macromolecules, they are our mucilages. Okay, they are called mucilage. And then another classification is based on the nature of the solvent used. So we have here three types of gels based on the nature of solvent used. We have hydrogel, organic gel, and the serogel. For a hydrogel, a hydrogel is a network of polymer chains that are hydrophilic. They contain water as their continuous liquid phase. On the other hand, for our organic gel, they are non-crystalline, they are non-glassy, thermoreversible or thermoplastic solid material and they are composed of a liquid organic phase and trapped in a three-dimensionally cross-linked network. So they contain a non-aqueous solvent as a continuous phase. And then we have our serogels. For our serogels, they are solid gel with low solvent concentration and are produced by evaporation of solvent or freeze drying. So they usually are prepared through drying slowly at room temperature with an unconstrained shrinkage. And then we also have here another classification which is based on rheological properties. So when we say rheological properties, these are the properties that govern the way on how things deform or flow. So usually, gels, they exhibit what we call as non-Newtonian flow properties. And based on rheological properties, we have three types of gels. We have here your plastic gels, we have our pseudoplastic gels, and our thixotropic gels. So when we say plastic gels, a material which can be made to flow with some critical amount of applied stress, the yield point, below which it will not flow at all. Therefore, when we say plastic gels, 
once the stress is no longer applied, it will generally not flow back to its original configuration. And therefore, these plastic gels, they can be molded. Okay? We also have to bear in mind that for our plastic gels, the viscosity, okay, viscosity decreases at higher shear stress or higher stress applied, the viscosity decreases. Okay, next one we have our pseudo plastic gels. So, for our pseudo plastic gels, they exhibit behaviors both of Newtonian flow and plastic flow. The liquid flows as a plastic at high shear rates but does not have a yield point and so will always flow under a shear stress like a Newtonian liquid. So, this behavior is also called shear. Thinning. Okay, so this is also known as shear thinning. Okay, so this behavior is also known as shear thinning. And then uh, for pseudoplastics, we always have to remember the more stress is applied, the more freely it flows. Okay, so more stress applied the more freely it flows okay and then of course we have their thixotropic and decrease in viscosity as stress over time increases again when we say thixotropic it's a property of certain gels which liquefy when subjected to vibratory forces like shaking and agitation and then eventually solidify again when left standing or undisturbed now for our Pseudoplastic gels, we also have the counterpart of pseudoplastic gels. Again, pseudoplastic gels, they are, uh, we call them shear thinning. Uh, the counterpart for that is dilatant, which is also known as your shear thickening. Thickening. Okay, so... As you can see here, we have here viscosity again and then stress applied or st the force applied. So some liquids behave differently when stress is applied or when there is application of force. Shear thickening liquids increase in viscosity as stress increases. So as you can see here, this one shear thickening or dilatant gels. For our th shear thickening, again, shear thickening liquids increase in viscosity as stress increases. So the higher the stress applied, the higher the viscosity of the gel. And then, again, um, the shear rate is increased the viscosity of the system also increases. That is for shear thickening or dilatant. And then on the other hand, we have their shear thinning. For shear thinning, the higher the shear rate, and the less viscous the gel becomes. Okay, that's shear thinning or pseudoplastic. Okay, again, um, let us not be confused. Shear thickening liquids, this one, increase in viscosity as stress increases. So as the shear rate is increased, the viscosity of the system also increases. Thus, the viscosity of shear thickening fluid is dependent on shear rate. Okay, So the viscosity of shear thickening liquids is dependent on the shear rate an example of this is cornstarch in water okay cornstarch in water the more force the more um, stress is applied to cornstarch in water the more that the paste or the mixture becomes viscous
Okay, on the other hand, we have here shear thinning or pseudoplastic. Okay, shear thinning liquids decrease in viscosity as stress increases. So the more stress is applied, the more freely it flows. This is a useful property for materials like paint and nail polish, which you want to flow only when brushing it. Typical examples of gels that possess this sheer thinning property are ketchup, whipped cream, blood, paint, and nail polish. Okay? So, again, dilatant, sheer thickening, pseudoplastic, sheer thinning. And then, we have there the classification of gels based on on physical nature and we have two types we have rigid and elastic of course by the term itself rigid they are unable to bend so they are unable to bend or be forced out of shape or basically they are not flexible on the other hand, we have here elastic. By the term itself, they are flexible. They are able to resume their normal shape spontaneously. After distortion, spontaneously after distortion okay so those are the different types of our um, or the classifications of gels again classifications of gels based on colloidal system we have the two-phase system and the single phase system we have the classification of gels based on nature of solvent we have three hydrogel organic gel and serogels Based on rheological properties or the properties that govern the way on how things deform or flow, we also have three, plastic, pseudoplastic, and thixotropic. We also have there the counterpart of pseudoplastic, which is dilatant or shear thickening. We also have mentioned about the um, last classification of gels, which is based on physical nature. We have rigid and elastic.